Hello and welcome to the solarized version of Method CRM, a CRM customized for solar contractors by Kendrick Business Services. In this video, we are going to show you how Method CRM has been customized for solar contractors who perform solar installations and electrical service work. We make it easy for you to follow the steps to take you from the sales or opportunity stage to the pre-installation phase then the installation phase, including inspections, and all the way to project close and customer follow-up. We have a lot of ground to cover, so in case you want more information, we also provide you with a detailed instruction manual sponsored by the Energy Trust of Oregon. We also have a copy of the workflow shown in this video published inside your solarized version of Method CRM for all of your team to review if they need a reminder. Great, let's start with the typical installation from the sales lead or opportunity stage to the pre-install stage and then to the install and closeout stage. We have a new lead and her name is Sally Peaches. She heard about our solar installation company from the local power company and we received her incoming call. Let's start on our navigation homepage. We created easy to distinguish icons to make this simple to navigate for your first step. I won't go through every icon. However, at the bottom, you can expand this help to see tips on how each icon fits within the workflow steps for leads and projects. Sally Peaches calls and we identify her as a new residential lead. So the icon I'll first pick is the house with solar panels. Huzzah! On the new residential screen, I can ask Sally all kinds of information that may be helpful for the first contact with the salesperson. Things like building type, roof type, heat source, who owns the structure, what method for financing they may be considering, and if they plan on adding additional electrical load to their existing electrical system. Once that is all filled in, we can continue. Since Sally wants a quote for new solar panels for her residents, we are going to choose the green button, save and get new opportunity for tracking potential sales. This will also notify the salesperson that they have a new lead that requires a follow-up. Now, if the salesperson is adding the information themselves, the opportunity will become their tracking mechanism immediately. This opportunity screen pops up and we can add even more information about the Peach's family, their solar needs, and how they heard about us. We also provide a handy link to the Google Sunroof website for a quick peek to see if they live in a forest and have no sun for their solar panels. You need sun, so that is, that is pretty important. Here we have a notes box which allows me to keep a running dialogue of all my notes and even adds a date in my name so I don't have to add it. Huzzah! If I am like a lot of solar contractors, I use Excel for my estimating. But I don't want to type in all the information again, so there's this handy copy-paste pop-up that can be formatted to match my estimating workbook. Okay, over here you may have noticed this pie chart icon. It's for activities. And you may have seen this icon in a number of other screens. Selecting this will bring up typical project activities I can add to the opportunity. Since I've been doing this for a while, I know that there are typical steps I follow for every solar project during the lead and after the project has been awarded. I can pre-populate these activities for Sally Peaches and assign them to myself or my team. I'll select all these activities and then hit the Create Selected Activities button and they all get added to my opportunity. By the way, you can alter these tasks or even make your own with different names and labels and time frames by going to the Solar Instructions tab. Click on the Solar Activities Type List and this is where you can create one or two or a whole list of activities. Okay, now that I've created these activities, where can I monitor them? I can do it in a few places. Let's go back to my opportunity and down here where it says existing activities for this opportunity, uh, there isn't any because these are activities in the past. So let me change the filter view to show all my activities. And there they are, the ones I created. I can also go to my sales dashboard to monitor all my activities and opportunities that need attention. Okay, let's make a few more changes to our opportunity. I can go back to it by going to the opportunities list in the sales opportunities tab. It will, as the name suggests, list all of my opportunities and I'm going to go into the one I just made. Let me scroll to the bottom and I'm going to find the solar project tab. This is all the information we can keep track of. Information for the project and contract, information for the system including PV modules and inverters, 
site information for each array, such as TSRF, azimuth, and tilt. And this column allows you to keep track of utility and permitting info. In fact, you can send an alert to remind your team members when the permit has been approved. This column is a checklist to keep track of the material orders and design phase tasks. We make it easy to monitor and double check to make sure they have been completed. And down here in this section, we have alerts. You can track information for the design and installation team members with these alerts for AC disconnect, EV plug, critic guard, and more. Now this may seem a lot to fill in, but you can import this information for all the equipment that was spec'd. Also, the estimate is not automatically created. However, you can have your estimating tool customized for API integration. And then with a push of a button in your Excel workbook, it will populate the estimate form that will sync with QuickBooks when ready. Let's fast forward this example to great news. Sally Peaches accepted our proposal, signed the contract, sent it to us, and we're ready to move ahead on her project. I'll go back to her opportunity and push the awarded get job number and sync to QuickBooks button. Now, Sally has a job number using the sequence I chose on the Solar Instructions tab, and all I had to do was push a button. The button also notified the project management team so they can get ready to start working on Sally's project. And what's more, all the transactions and activities so far moved over to the job for tracking. Spectacular! Let's go back to our workflow sheet. We've done the opportunity and pre-install stage, and now we are at the install stage. Our team is now out in the field installing those solar panels, and time has passed. While this is happening, we can monitor Sally Peach's project and have an overview on how we've been doing. Back in the solarized version of method, we're going to jump to the customers and leads tab, and we will find this tab link project tracking. I'll change this view filter to projects in progress. And there's Sally Peaches. I'm going to select filter tasks by job. And look, we have a complete overview of this project. There's been a lot of work that's been going on. At the top, I can see a total of my estimate versus actual to date. The first row shows my actual costs, the estimated cost, and the variance between the two. This row shows actual and estimated revenue, and finally, our actual and estimated hours. Here, we can find all the activity tasks with their statuses. I can see completed tasks and tasks that still need to be done. Below that are the invoices and estimates for this project and their amounts. Did Sally pay her deposit invoice? Yeah, she did. Awesome. She also was sent the second invoice. On top of that, we can see other invoices we sent her and whether or not they've been paid. If we keep scrolling, we can see the site and design section. I can see the site plan, structural engineering review, final drawings, and my safety walkthrough has all been completed. Haha, <laughs> we're on top of things. Next up is material tracking and purchase orders. And, huh, look at this. This received quantity is zero. The other material has been received except for the optimizer, which was ordered on September 19th. I better check on that optimizer. Hmm, I'm going to continue on to the work orders and time tracking. It looks like the office and design team has been doing their job and completed the pre-installation as planned. And it also looks like the installer started working on the site as soon as the design team was finished. Ha, <laughs> good grief, I better get that optimizer on site. Oh, and this is neat. I can also see how much the labor has cost so far with my fully burdened labor rate that I set up on the solar instructions tab. I can see the real time costs of the labor that's been done. That's pretty handy. And it looks like Joe, the technician, put a note on his time card that he added an extra utility plug, light and switch. Speaking of costs, here is a list of all the expenses so far on Sally's project. If I want to know how much has been spent on Sally's job so far, that was at the top, remember? And, oh dear, I don't have much to spend on the optimizer. I'm not even close to completing the project. On the next job like Sally's, I will know I need to add labor hours and material costs. The note Joe left me about the extra work he did for Sally will help me with the change order. Huh. It's cool I can see all of this information before I bill Sally. She will be expecting the change order to be added to her bill since it was documented by Joe on site, and it will remind me and the office so we don't miss it. With all the jobs our team handles at one time, extra work like this used to fall through the cracks until it was too late and we would forget to bill Sally. 
Good job, Joe, the technician. And hey, good job, me, project manager extraordinaire. Ha <laughs> ha. Now that Sally's job is just about complete, let's look at how we can track work orders for service work. We will come back to Sally later when the project is finished. I'm back at the navigation homepage. Joe Bob Jones called in and wants us to check his electrical panel because there's a breaker that keeps tripping. We know Joe Bob from other work we did for him in the past, so we go to the icon with the service truck, and then I'll find Joe Bob, and there he is. I'll click on Create Work Order to create a work order for Joe Bob Jones. Joe Bob wants a quick ballpark estimate to add a circuit and two outlets before we go to his job. We can do this right from the work order. First, I add instructions to the technician to let him know what I told Joe Bob. Then I add the scope of the work and then the job items for the quote. Okay. Also, since the technician is going on site, I'm going to use the green button here to make a job to send to QuickBooks before I close this work order. Awesome. At the bottom, I can save this work order and close. But note, I have a few more buttons. This button will send the quote to Joe Bob. This will send the work order to the technician. And this button will do both of those actions. All of this accomplished with a push of a few buttons. Huzzah! Now, can we see this work order in a calendar? You bet. We have a field services center. And when I go there, I can view our field services calendar. And ta-da! There's the work order ready for the technician. Currently, the work order is red, which means it hasn't started yet. When its status changes, then its color also changes, which makes it easier for us to identify. When I hover over the work order, I can see more details. Selecting this button, I can also change the status, create an invoice, print the work order, edit the customer or work order right from this screen. Let's fast forward a bit, and I see it's now green, which means the work order is in progress. And if I skip time more, now it's purple, and that means the work order is complete. Again, I can hover over the work order and create the invoice based on the estimate given. Now that you've seen the work order process from start to finish, let's check up on Sally Peach's project to see what progress has been made. I'll go back to the project tracking screen and bring up Sally's project. Look, all the tasks are completed, even sending the post install thank you note with the referral and feedback request. And Sally's paid all of her invoices in full. She's amazing. Now that all the bills for Sally's project have been added to the system and the labor is done, let's see how this job turned out for profitability. Not too bad, our revenue is exactly as estimated with the change order. Although we did estimate 83 and a half hours with the change order and the actual came out to 86. This includes the office labor and it looks like I underestimated how much time is spent in the office completing paperwork and permitting. We will need to figure out a way to cut down on the time it takes for paperwork or else add more time to our estimates in the future. I am glad I can see this information so I can track this for next time. Now that we are finished with Sally Peach's job, let's take a look from the management's point of view to see what the team has been up to. Here is the management dashboard. And I can see all the team's activities not completed yet. And look, there is a handy send reminder button for any activities that may need attention. This will send an email to the team member assigned and ask them to give me an update. What are you doing? If I scroll down, I can see forecasted revenue versus goal amounts. To learn more about this feature, go to the Solar Instructions tab. Over here, we have the Leads dashboard to see graphs, lots of graphs. And we can filter the date range to get a better idea on how we are doing. Awesome. If I scroll down, I will find the lead source percentage graph. It shows me the source of my leads and which are working best. There are handy other graphs like number of leads by source, number of projects closed by rep, and the dollar value. We can also see the current status of leads, open lead status, and several other graphs for management. Okay, we're almost done. Let's briefly cover a few other features that have been included in the solarized version of Method CRM. On this tab link, we have a cash flow forecast. We use forecasted revenue, costs, and expected payment date on estimates to populate the cash flow forecast. The solarized version of Method also includes the standard features of Method CRM, such as attached documents under the Documents tab, 
and transactions that sync with QuickBooks, which can be found in the Customers and Leads tab or the Vendors tab. Let's take a quick look at the transactions for customers. Here we can see invoices, payments, sales orders, credit memos, sales receipts, and time tracking. All of these transactions sync with QuickBooks for your customers. On the Vendors tab, we can find the vendor transactions, such as vendor bills, credits, purchase orders, checks, item receipts, and bill payments. And of course, you can show or hide any of these transactions from your team members as needed. And that's it. We are done. I hope this video has given you a sense on how the Solarized version of Method CRM can optimize and ease your workflow. This has been brought to you by Kendrick Business Services. And if you have any questions or wish for additional customization services, please contact Annie Kendrick. Interested in getting the solarized version of Method CRM? You can start a 30 day trial for $100, so give us a call. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye!